Good day everyone. My name is Mr. Chisum. Today we'll be looking at the gross anatomy of the uterine tube. The gross anatomy of the uterine tube. The uterine tube is defined as a narrow tube that extends from the lateral or the superior lateral part of the uterus. It extends from the superior lateral part of the uterus at the at the uterine horn and open into the peritoneal cavity close to the ovary. So I repeat, it is a narrow tube that extends from the superior lateral part of the uterus and open into the peritoneal cavity close to the ovary and it opens into the peritoneal cavity through the abdominal ostium around here. So the uterine tube can also be called the fallopian tube, the oviduct and the salpinge. So these are the three other names the uterine tube can be given. Then coming to the function of the uterine tube, the uterine tube helps to allow the passage of the ovarian discharge. That is to say that the monthly discharge of the ovary, the monthly discharge of the ovary passes through the uterine tube and is moved out. Then apart from that, the uterine tube have a part which is known as the ampulla and the ampulla is the site for fertilization. So this is what I mean. Let's assume that um, Mr. and Mrs. Chidera and the Joy Eze are married. So when Mrs. Joy releases eggs or when Mrs. Joy releases an egg, the egg goes to the ampulla part of the uterine tube and waits there. Now, if Mr. Chidera having tacos with Mrs. Joy Eze, the sperm goes direct to where the eggs are sitting and fertilizes it. So remember I used Mr. and Mrs. Chidera Eze to prove that they are couples. So that is it. So this is to say that the ampular part of the uterine tube is the site for fertilization. And that is the function of the uterine tube. Then the uterine tube is 10 cm in length and it is situated in the lesser pelvis. Eh? Actually, there are two uterine tubes in the female, one on the right side and one on the left side. One on the right side here and the other one on the left side here. So the two of them are situated here in the lesser pelvis or you can say in the inguinal region, both the right and the left inguinal region. Then, having said that, let's look at the parts of the uterine tube. Let's look at the parts of the uterine tube. The uterine tube has four parts. We have the infundibulum, we have the ampulla, we have the isthmus and we have the uterine parts. So the first part, which is the infundibulum, this part here is the infundibulum. This is the funnel shaped distal end of the uterine tube. It is the funnel shaped distal end of the uterine tube that opens into the peritoneal cavity through the abdominal ostia and this infundibrum have a finger-like process of projections that surrounds it and this finger-like projections is known as the fimbre and you can see the fimbre these finger-like projections and these are this is the fimbricated part of the this is the fimbricated part of the uterine tube then, when the ova is released from the ovary, the first place the ova goes is it moves to the peritoneal cavity. So, when the ovarian follicle ruptures and the ovary rupture and the ova is being released, 
the ova goes to the peritoneal cavity and it doesn't last long there once the infundibulum notices that something is there it traps it so that is the work of these finger-like projections to trap the ova so it traps it from the from the peritoneal cavity and from there it moves to the site of fertilization then the second part of the uterine tube is the ampulla the ampulla part of the uterine tube is the longest and the widest part of the uterine tube like i told us the ampulla part is the site for fertilization so this is the ampulla part it is the site for fertilization so that is where the egg that was released will travel for close to three days and wait there it will remain there until a sperm fertilizes it so that is what the ampulla does it is the site for fertilization then the third part is the isthmus this part this part is a thick walled short part of the uterine tube that is attached to the it is attached to the wall of the uterus so it is attached to the wall of the uterus so we have the final part which is known as the uterine part so we, this part is known as the uterine part actually the uterine part is the intramural part of the uterine tube that extends from or it opens from the wall of the uterus into the uterine cavity through the uterine ostium when i say intramural i mean that it opens first of all from the wall of the uterus and open into the uterine cavity so it is located within the wall of the uterus so that is the uterine part for you so having seen the four parts of the uterine tube let's move over to the arterial supply the uterine tube is supplied by the tubal part of the ovarian artery and also the tubal part of the uterine artery then the venous drainage is the tubal part of the ovarian vein and also the tubal part of the uterine vein then coming to the nerve supply it is supplied by the ovarian plexus and also the uterine plexus then the clinicals the first clinicals that will come to the mind is tubal ligation what is tubal ligation tubal ligation simply means a, it, it is a birth control uh, process whereby the tube is ligated or the tube is cut off or the tube is clipped or blocked so that remember that the ampulla part is the site for fertilization so the tube is clipped or the tube is blocked or the tube is cut off so that a, a when sexual intercourse happen the sperm doesn't reach the ampulla so it will not find its way into the ampulla and what happened to the egg that has been released in the ampulla when tubal ligation happened what happened there is that as it waits for sperm to fertilize it if the sperm doesn't come it gets absorbed so that is the fate of the ova when tubal ligation happen and this tubal ligation can occur through making incision in the um, abdomen that is slightly above the pubic hair an incision is made in the inguinal region you can clip it there or you can also make incision around the around the navel and also use laparoscope to also uh, clip it so that is it then the second clinical we have is ectopic pregnancy these are the most common clinicals of the uterine tube ectopic pregnancy simply means that if the tube is blocked when a, the ova or the egg get fertilized you know that it is supposed to travel back to the uterus where implantation will happen but maybe because of the tube is blocked the fertilized egg will not find its way into the uterus it will now get implants in the ampulla 
it can get implants in other parts of the uterine tube but the main part or the major part where this egg or where this fertilized egg gets implanted is the ampulla. So it gets implanted in the ampulla. And this implantation in the ampulla causes pain. You can imagine where the uterine tube uh, gets implanted. It causes a lot of pain. And also it puts the life of the mother into risk. And also eventually lead to the death of the death of the developing embryo so that is it for a topic pregnancy so we've come to the end of this teaching i will encourage us to subscribe to my youtube channel learn with chisum great like this video share this video to your friends and comment on this video thank you very much